Thank you for coming for reading from an excerpt from my novel, The Nature of Truth. Uh, Helmut Sanchez is a 26-year-old researcher at Yale, and he discovers uh, this 40-year-old letter that says some horrible things about the Holocaust. And so at this point in the novel, which is the beginning, uh, Helmut is deciding what he should do. And as you will see, uh, next door to Helmut, his boss, Werner Hofgartner, is administering an exam to a student. Helmut Sanchez, even at 26, appeared far too serious for his own good. Everyone had said he looked like his mother. He looked like his mother, yet he acted like his father. His thick black hair had a tendency to grow too fast, so that if you waited four weeks between haircuts, his hair became helmet-like. His face possessed high cheekbones, an angular chin, a Roman nose. The skin pale, not ruddy, more the color of a contemporary Greek or Italian man, for whom he was repeatedly mistaken. And yet Helmut Sanchez was in fact half German and half Mexican, or at least New Mexican. Only its practical implementation had been a distortion, Helmut thought. The excessive digression of a few idiots? I must be going out of my mind. Of course, it can't be the same person. I should just forget the whole thing. It's none of my business anyway. After two hours, Helmut was almost done touching up the Krista Wolf bibliography. There was one reference he'd have to check tomorrow at Sterling. Maybe Mr. Atwater could give him a hand. But the writing was finished, and Helmut could give it confidently to the old man for his final comments. And that would be that. In just two weeks, Professor Hofgartner would be in Europe, and Helmut would be more or less free for the first half of the summer. Free except for that. Those pages in a blue folder. An odd and obscured little thing Helmut had almost forgotten about while he had been with Ariana a couple of pages of German prose that had gripped his heart like a bloody, rotted hand from the grave. A curse, really. A door banged shut at one end of the basement hallway. Only one final exam was in progress in the Harkness basement, and it had started two hours ago. Helmut heard quick, short footsteps on the linoleum floor. She walked by again without so much as a glance into his open office. In her short black sh skirt and black blouse, she almost melted into the hallway darkness, except for her beautiful young legs. Helmut heard her rap against the door next to his. Was Vo Werner Hofgartner still here? Helmut had forgotten to check for a sliver of light underneath the professor's door when he returned from lunch. That had been careless of him. Helmut heard the professor's door open, and she walked in. She wasn't, of course, the only she, yet she was certainly the most exquisite, terribly young and tender, absolutely bold, not the least bit careful or doubtful or guilty. In a way, she reminded him of Ariana, and in a way she did not. Ariana Sassolini was loving and passionate, and not just voracious. Helmut closed the door and locked it. He stepped beside the computer keyboard, saved his work, and turned the machine off. Murmurs now seemed to emanate from the wall he shared with the Jonathan P. Harkness Professor of Literature and Philosophy. He could occasionally hear a word or two through a ventilation grate on the wall a foot from the floor. He slid into the reading chair with a book on his lap. The blue folder was next to him. The professor and one of his conquests. The very best one. Ja, meine Schöne, ja. It comes to all of us from nowhere, Helmut thought. This cursed evil. Why me? I am not even a part of that generation. I should simply stop reading these pages. Ignore them. It's none of my business at all. That evil screw up the world for all I care. 
Why should I give a damn? Please, dear God, what should I do? I'm sick of this feeble mind. Ach, nein, hier, besser, ja, viel besser, mein Liebling. First, I should find out the facts, Helmut thought. I don't even know anybody's exact involvement. It could be a horrible mistake on my part. Should I tell Ariana about my suspicions? Maybe I should find out the truth first, piece by piece, a methodical investigation. Certainly I'm good at that. Mein Gott! Mein Gott! What terrible rubbish, Helmut thought. What abyss of words. It will never end even with my grandchildren. It was simply a nightmare. My blood. I can't escape that. But then again, why escape? Why not confront and act now? I should at least find out who it really is, exactly who. These words, the thought and prose of that nightmare, my God. Ja, ja, mein God, ja, mein God, oh mein lieber God. Helmut Sanchez carefully balanced the blue folder on his knee. The room was finally quiet. Slowly he read the German words, these carefully chosen words, the style rhythmic and assured, the logic clear, almost convincing, finally ghoulish. He heard a door slam shut, and the same hurried little footsteps stomped down the empty hallway again. After a few seconds, he heard a faraway door close like a muffled explosion, an echo. When he had read the essay, why I am neither guilty nor ashamed, for the first time this weekend, he had been expecting nothing out of the ordinary. But as one word led to another, and an idiotic thought connected to a dangerous one, Helmut couldn't believe his eyes. These words! He wanted to stop reading. He wanted to will himself back in time before he had ever set eyes on these words. He read the pages to the bitter end and put them in a blue folder. Maybe the utter shock of reading them was greater because Helmut had been expecting nothing when he had picked up these pages this past weekend. If you open a closet where your winter coats are stored for the season and find instead the red wormy head of Mrs. Johnson from across the street on a spike, then you too might be especially shocked out of your mind. Helmut heard Hofgartner's door close with a soft click. The knob was wiggled once, and then twice, to check the lock. And then more footsteps, plodding softly, nearly gliding, made their way down the hallway too. Did they almost pause in front of his door? Of course not. It was Helmut's imagination again. After a few minutes, he heard the faraway door close again. These words more than 35 years old, from an obscure literary journal, why I am neither guilty nor ashamed, the language still evoking the bitter copper stink of blood in the air, a fog of blood. Thank you. So one of the things that the novel focuses on is Helmut's decision to do something about what something is written. Um, this is a crucial issue, I think, in moral philosophy. When uh, a person, an, a moral actor, decides that it is his responsibility or her responsibility to do something in the name of justice, to right a wrong that has escaped any kind of justice. And so Helmut is faced with this question, and as he explores uh, who wrote the letter, uh, and he finds out uh, that it's somebody quite close to him, uh, he's faced with the dilemma of what he should do. Mm -hmm.